wonderful people Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel hope you're all doing very well very well indeed here we go Chime debut album Etherborn it is being released on his own label Rushdown Recordings we've got 17 tracks here one hour 10 minutes long so a bit of a beast this collection this project very much looking forward to it a few of these tracks have been out a while as singles but I've heard absolutely none of it I've heard none of this material at all Chime, one of the best world builders with his music in bass music, hands down. One of, if not the color bass pioneer. And yeah, just super excited to see what we're going to get here. The genre of variety, the different kinds of sounds on show, the difference between the shorter tracks and the longer tracks comparatively, how he's just, just how he's going to go about an album. Like I said, a bit of a world builder and an album was just the perfect thing for him to do with his style, given how much scope there is to it, how much potential there is to it to it with the melody and again the sound usage the color overall the production prowess yes I'm hyped. Something quick I did want to note on with my own format here, done a bit of rejigging, but it's all important information. I can understand there's quite a lot going on here on the screen, but yeah, all important stuff. Socials, Patreon, if you want a bit more bass music coverage content from your boy, please do like, please do subscribe if you haven't yet. And also, yeah, do drop your thoughts down below on Etherborn if you are hearing it here for the first time with me in this video, or if you've heard it already, do drop your thoughts on the LP in the comment section down below. But yes, without any further ado, let us kick it off, shall we, with the opener into the machine. Do want to highlight the artwork as well, by the way. Perfectly reflective of Chime's style, colour-wise, and just, again, that world-building thing. He's got it going with the artwork as well. Beautiful. Being transported straight into this technological, futuristic, video game driven kind of world. Here we have from Atoms to Pixels with Sekai, who I imagine is on vocal duty here. Little effect on that vocal there, that little glitch. Oh, Ooh, okay, okay. Damn, I mean, quite a lot going on already. Loads of colour. Nice vocal to complement it from Sekai, I think, here. Just so much uh, melodic prowess bound up in it already in these opening stages, you know. Yeah, these that 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 bit that bit is just perfect marriage of instrumental and vocal right there. I'm gonna let this transition run just to see if it blends like seamlessly into the next track. He didn't actually. There was a, there was a little cutoff point. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, starting with the introduction, that was nice. It gave us a little glimpse into the glitchy world that Chime is, uh, I suppose, going to try and create and portray over the course of this album. Had hints of Virtual Riot simulation opening, had hints of uh, we Are Dust from Xylent as well. Just lobbing in all this colour, all this uh, technological glitchy effect, synth usage. Very cool. And yeah, just plunging you right in there from the very beginning. I'm a fan. After that, we have the track we just heard from Atoms to Pixels. Yeah, I mean, full of colour, emphatic, pretty hard hitting as well with the production. Quite snappy with the drops that we got there. Makes for a pretty typical chime track, if I'm being honest. I think there were particular moments that stood out in the progression I think in particular of each drop again when you got that perfect marriage between Chimes instrumental and Sekai's vocal that was just beautiful that kind of that those little melodic touches that awareness with the note progression and stuff like that just uh, perfect perfect chemistry going on there firing I would say in certain moments like I've hinted at as opposed to the whole track I think it is just solid uh, without being you know completely remarkable but again it is an emphatic opening a good track to have at the beginning there next up we have Homeworld track number three. 
effectively if we're including the introduction. Yeah, really, really building a world, building an image here. Oh, very nice drum work there. Loving that, that's lovely. Some of the little touches here, off the cuff kind of little quips here with the sound usage. Very, very aware with the, the placement of everything. Those classic chimey snares. You've just got to, you, you, you can't, you can't not love them. You can't not love them. Where's it going to go from here? See, this is the first bit of like me wondering how many genres he's going to incorporate here. Bit of colour house, okay. Okay. Little bit of a transition there, you know, not not quite a cut off point. It did it did blend into the next track that we're going to hear in a sec. But yeah, that one quite understated, quite an interesting tune. I mean, quite a lot of points where you think like, oh, this could really burst out into some big tune, especially when the first drop comes in. I mean, it isn't really a drop. We get a build, and then it kind of goes into this quelled, spacious, just dropping sounds here and there, quite atmospheric, super amped up with the color again as well but just more particular with the sound usage and the use of space we get than creating something heavy per se so that's the first kind of instance of feeling like okay not quite what we expected but that's you know that's completely fine i think it's just quite a uh, quite an abstract kind of tune for him given that he likes a banger because uh, he's just gone for something here that is yeah i think quite unique and quite different not only for him within his style but within bass music generally yeah just what we're getting here at each turn just kind of goes off on a bit of a tangent that you, you don't quite expect which is good the house at the end is nice and and doesn't kind of steal the show as a final moment, if you will. It's just quite chilled. It could have been overly heavy and that would have kind of taken a lot of the limelight from the uh, the first half of this track. Keeping it very unpredictable across the whole thing, just uh, quite different and uh, unique with regards to what he has done before in his discography. So yeah, an interesting tune there, Homeworld at number three. At number four, following that, we have Sherwood. Oh, this one I actually have heard. Yeah, yeah, this one I have heard. Yeah. I think it was last year, you know. I remember thinking, oh, I could maybe put this in my, you know, tracks of the tracks of the year, but. I feel like it might be leading towards something else maybe, it might be part of something bigger, and here we are. Yeah, some of that melodic work in that drop is just beautiful, stunning, really uh, really scaled feel to it, you know, quite euphoric. It's got these little pigeon sounds as well, <laughs> I know that sound really well. That, that That is the exact animal, this kind of pigeon, this kind of bird, that would just chill in the garden of my granddad's house, so um, I, I, I know it well, I know it well. <laughs> Yeah, that bit, that is super like, mm, heart rending. So much pure feeling, so much pure emotion going on here. Like, it's just radiating, emanating. Oh, that melodic work, that, that is chime, full flow stuff right there. Again, just waiting for these transitions, like. That's a transition. Yeah, I'd heard it before, but that is my favorite so far. It's just 
pretty complete for what it's going for, you know, not as ambitious as other music, even other tracks we've heard here so far within this album. It doesn't need it because it's just to the point, knows what it's good for, repeats in important ways from drop to drop, you know, little differences here and there, but you've got those cascading sounds of duh, 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 with a real scale to them, you know, really inspire this kind of euphoric feeling within you. Uh, yeah, those kinds of repetition, those little bits of, you know, those motifs, those sounds, whatever you want to call them, very good uh, tying up the tune really well, produced again really well, loads of colour, especially enjoy how the second drop just completely blooms by the end of it and explodes with colour, so much of that that's kind of pent up a little bit as it goes on, but in a good way, you know, it builds up quite naturally towards that. And yeah, just a very radiant track, vibrant. I can't really think of a way, like a distinct way in which I'm just like, no, I'm not sure that one works. It's just a, a good one to have early doors here, that kind of track that just, again, explodes with color and emotion and feeling. Yeah, I am, I, I'm a fan of that one. It, it ticks many, if not all the boxes for him. Uh, but next up we have Subterrain at track number five. There's a real attention to detail with this album. Again, the world building the atmospheres, it's just, it's really, really... Ooh. Melodically, genuinely, few people get near Chime or touch Chime in that room, like, honestly. Oh, I'm liking this one. This old wobbly little wobbly wibbler. Oi. Bringing that naughtiness in. Okay, you've given me the colour in that opening few. Now give me a bit of... Ooh. Now that I'm reflecting a bit on this opening few, I think it might have been a little bit of a slow start with that uh, opening couple we got ideas wise not it's just not quite with the bite and the kind of attention grabbing personality and charm of this one and Sherwood just before it a lot of this is going for quite like a, a quelled, squashed atmosphere kind of vibe, like a bit muffled. Really interesting because in, in those moments, they're all moments where he could easily have gone for like a wow, like a big throwing it in your face kind of drop, but he just he just squashes it down a little bit, just quells it a little bit. Another really interesting tune with a lot going on. I mean, we get prime chime wobbles in that first half. I was getting the stank face out. The hands were moving about, the introduction just preceding that, you know, built it up really well. A lot of hype about it, quite electrifying. Those insertions of sounds here and there, the wub 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 you know, not completely going for a straightforward formulaic one-dimensional wub 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 wub. Like he was he was inserting the sounds, the extra sounds here and there, which is really good. And then the drop again, yeah, following that, the second one, I'm still just like, I'm a bit perplexed by it. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm saying I appreciate it. I can see it's there. It's just an interesting avenue to go down and direction to take in terms of the energy, just quelling it, just giving it that little kind of like a flickering light bulb. That's the kind of image that that second drop gave me. It was just kind of pulsing along, that little vibration going on there. And that is what we got uh, for that final section. So yeah, it's interesting. I'm loving the variety here, not only with genre, but also with mood, with tempo. You know, he's clearly having fun. He's experimenting. He's lobbing it all in there, just seeing, you know, kind of whatever takes his fancy. Regardless, I think, of whether you like it, if you can hear that someone's having fun and just kind of having their hand at being creative like that, it's infectious and you're going to enjoy it at least a little bit. So that's very much what is happening here so far. But following that, at track number six, we have Bittersweet Butterflies. Okay, let's go. Six and a half minutes, you know. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is sweet. This is sweet. Those little pattered drums behave, chime. 
Behave. Mate, this is beautiful. This is lovely. This is lovely. Alright. To have all these different elements just marry up like this, the vocal chopping, the kind of prodding notes that we're getting, the percussion with the chemistry in that kind of organic feeling way, all the musicality just working as well. Not easy to do, not easy to do. Oh. I think this this is the kind of stuff I prefer. This little prodding sound. So Got me down a darker avenue. Discovering as I hear it more, there's a lot of little little vocal snippets from from Harvey in these tracks, just trying to, you know, embellish that world building more and more. No, I mean even when it is a bit more fleshed out like this, and it is something I suppose that we've heard from him before, it does still have that that joyous feel about it, that colour, that production, all that good stuff. Honestly, I can't stop gazing at this artwork. It's pretty um pretty entrancing. I'm just like, ooh, quite a range there of housey approaches from Chime. You got stuff where there's a little bit less going on and certain sounds are a bit more pronounced, a bit more articulated, which is what we got with the first drop, the first release of sound. Stuff that is a bit more fleshed out, which we've probably heard a bit of, uh, quite a bit of before from him, but we just got that colour, that radiance, that fullness about it and then that kind of midway point we got which was a bit darker and which felt a little bit superfluous i mean i know that it kind of led on and followed on from the whole uh, vocal snippet that we got from him where he wasn't sure what was going on it was glitching out a little bit See, as a follow on from that, it kind of had to be there, but I'm not sure it wasn't long enough and didn't have enough of a presence, I don't think, within the track to kind of constitute being there within the general context of the tune overall, in my opinion anyway. The more full stuff, the more radiant stuff is just classic chime, kind of serves its purpose there as well because it's there for quite a lot of it. But my favourite bit, I would have to say, and which I mentioned earlier, would be where there's not quite as much going on. You know, it was a different approach for him, just a bit more pronounced again in terms of which sounds were available and yeah just the management of space and timing and choosing when those sounds come in it just had more of a delicate feel about it which is something I'm not sure we've heard quite as much of before from him in which I wouldn't have minded you know coming in again more prominently at the end or just having more of a say within the track overall because it was so nice quite a long one where a couple sections here and there maybe could have been taken out in my opinion to make for a more cohesive cut but next up we have Zephyr with Mona Mua. Big wobtastic chimey dubstep. It's here, it's arrived, it's making itself known. Oh, these little plink snares, he absolutely loves them just to kind of bring the sound down a little bit, make it that bit more, yeah, again, fragile and delicate and emit something a bit more explosive, you know. This is absolutely the kind of dubstepy chime track that we have heard before. It's, you know, loads of colour, don't get me wrong, loads of uh, production value again, just uh, super bright. But not a particular thing singling it out so far, I wouldn't say. I mean, even with the vocal. Uh, from Mona Mua here, which is uh, quite run of the mill, I think. Uh, yet to have like a spark kind of moment about it, this one, but you yeah, know, a little bit of a way to go, yeah. That tune overall for me, the exact kind of one where I'm like, yeah, kind of heard it before from Chime, uh, was lacking a little bit that kind of 
that spark about it, that individuality, that personality that might set it aside from other stuff he's done in that vein. Even the vocal as well from uh, Mona Mua, you know, I was hearing it, I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. Doesn't have a particular flashiness about it or like memorability factor. It was just kind of serving a purpose as a vocal over an instrumental, if you know what I mean. The wubs are very good, to be fair, in the drops that we get here and the repetition from one drop to another. Again, little changes here and there. Wouldn't be a chime track without it, which is good. And the production, again, very on point. Uh, that backed up, thwacking, thumping, percussive style, which is... Uh, Come renowned for and honed very well over the years but yeah for me in spite of that good sound usage just lacking that real kind of wow factor that one as uh, almost a kind of midway point here you just feel that that one had you know beyond the good sound usage the wubs harking back to that old school modern dubstep flavor that it had a couple other places to go with the invention of it but moving on at number eight we have chrysalism lovely name let's go and this is kind of the midway point, is it? The next one, Bloom, I think is going to be the exact midway point, pretty much. Track number nine. Oh, the D&B is coming in. The variety making itself known. Making itself known. Ooh. Almost a kind of 8-bit, you know, crushy kind of vibe about it. Very video gamey. Even with these little moments of, you know, fleshing it out a bit more, adding and layering, it's still quite minimal. You know, the gaps are evident, but I think I think it works on that on, on, on that front in that regard. Mad birds in this album. Mad birds, you know. I do prefer the super minimal that we get with the initial release of each drop. Yeah, just very uh, pinpoint and kind of prickly with the uh, the sounds kind of darting out here and there. Just uh, really, really big attention to detail yet again here. The more fleshed out stuff, just a little bit harsher on the edge, just a little bit. But again, do appreciate how minimal it is. So yeah, liking that one as a, as a kind of tiding over tune, basically at the midway point here that we are getting. And uh, on that note, following up, track number nine is Bloom, which I think is pretty much exactly the midway point here on the LP. Just under three minutes. Is this the, the shortest one so far, barring the introduction and the outro? I think it is, you know. Mm, okay. Yep, yep. Ooh. Yep, okay, yes. Hits hard, got the colour. Come on, chime. Yeah, doing something to me with these little tuners, my friend. Ooh, back in again, back in again! Hey! Hey! <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah, this has got a little way to go yet, but this is this is one of my favourites so far. Absolutely, no doubt about it. No doubt about it, Sunshine. I have to say it's got all the stuff that a track like Zephyr, for example, going for a kind of similar thing, just doesn't. I can't get that out of my head. That is just going to be prodding prodding at my noggin for days on end color based dubstep fusion but just way more colorful way more you know little ingenious touches here and there and loads of little motifs and like really good bits of repetition just clever little sounds angling here and there as well more to the point just yeah really really good stuff doesn't really put a foot wrong that one melodically as well just all kind of tying up here and it's also that thing of knowing when you don't really need a vocal to kind of ramp it up or kind of elevate it or heighten it he's just so confident in the instrumental and quite rightly it's got so much going for it that he just kind of lets that run as it is it's just firing off here and very compact 
and well kind of packaged at just under three minutes yet that is easily one of my picks here so far so much fun track number 10 is beyond the peak with danakam if i am saying that wrong i've never known if i've said that right that vocal name i've never known Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, this again just sounds like one where Chime is having a lot of fun. Just so many random quirky moments jumping up, jumping in, sorry, out of nowhere there. It is another vocal so far that just feels a little bit lacking in like a real flair or wow factor with it. It just needs that, that one little direction note-wise to like... Just add on this lovely little whatever you would call this at the end. Oh, that's a moment. That is one of the moments. That is one of the moments of the LP. Just that little upturn. Wow. So much fucking good feeling up, bound up, blah, 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 you know? I have to admit, it's a kind of it's a kind of chime track where there's just so much going on. And, uh, you know, after a first listen, I just feel like I'm not going to do it justice because the detail is incredible. The spontaneity of it is mad. There's so much going on. There's no way I'm going to remember it. But from what I do remember, I loved the consistency of the first drop, which I'm not sure we quite got with the second drop. But the second drop has got that turning up moment at the end of it to bring in that quirky little ending section we got there which is all fruity and bubbly which is nice it does feel a little bit thrown together this one i mean the individual ideas are quite good but i don't think there's much of a linearity between it maybe within the drops themselves within the sections themselves but there's not a lot kind of tying these different sections together i mean again the colors there the productions there the transitioning between the sections as well is good but is the relationship between the different drops here within the tune i'm not entirely sure it feels like just hopping and skipping from one thing to another in um, not a drastic way, but in a slightly arbitrary fashion. And, you know, you might say, you might be sitting there saying, well, Connie, you said it was good in an unpredictable way. Yeah, for me, that is within the drops themselves. There's loads of little moments here that catch you off guard. But when we're talking about the spontaneity and the kind of randomness from uh, section to section, that's where I think it falls short a little bit because it just feels a bit random and like he's just plucked a couple of ideas here and there throwing them together within a tune again it, it you know it's probably well very likely going to be one that i just appreciate more hearing it more definitely going to add at this point that when it comes to an album like this where there is so much going on i'm just that there's no way that i'm going to have a full grasp of the you know the music the material at hand so don't take what i'm saying here in this first listen video as my complete rounded off thoughts they're just not it would be impossible to have that having heard these tracks once there is just so much going on number 11 is cloud factory three minutes 50. oh this has got attitude this has got some attitude to it i'm feeling this one Oh, oh, oi, 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 oi. He loves a dinky little snare. Oh, okay. Oi. This is a perfect example to show anyone how snare usage completely shapes and forms a track. Like the energy of it just changes completely from one snare to another. Some nice wubby synth usage here again. I mean, yeah, we've had a couple of instances here on this album so far where there's been dipping in and out of different kinds of snare. Has it quite worked as well as this one for me? This one doing it extremely well. Really building from below for this drop. Here we go. Ooh, just slapping us with the chimey snares. There we go. 
really did enjoy the dipping in and out of different snares that we got, stuff that's a bit more just dainty and kind of on its feet, a bit more lively, if you will. And then the stuff that's a bit more full whack, big sound. And yeah, like I said, a couple more tracks a little bit before that one that precede Cloud Factory that, uh, you know, do that dipping in and out of different snares thing, but not quite as well. So that one, the management of that one was uh, pretty on point, in my opinion. Maybe a couple moments here and there where you're just like, okay, this is overkill a little bit, doing it a little bit too much. But no, within that first drop that we got, the dipping in and out did work as a thing and the stuff that laid on top very beautiful very pretty and I do enjoy also how the second drop didn't do too much of that either so that really could have become overkill if he was just doing too much of that in the second drop as well but just another solid track I think within the LP so far next up we have escape velocity track number 12 with a bit of a beat with a bit of a beat Oof. Oh. oh, very nice, very nice. Mate, little little touches like this, pretty much all of them I think fit in so well, but they're, they're so they're so out of nowhere and they, they kind of feel misplaced, but I, I'm I'm a fan. I I love those little moments of inspiration there. Ooh. True velocity going on here. Okay. Doing the title justice here for sure. I mean, I'm not trying to escape it, but um, velocity. Is, is absolutely what we are getting here with this uh, final section. Yeah, conceptually, a very interesting tune in terms of the drops. I enjoyed the motoring dubstep kind of flavor we got. I mean, I had no idea what we were going to get following that build. I thought it might be some trancey kind of thing following the introduction, which was also very good, by the way. Loved the, the pulsing feel of that, how it brought the track in very seamlessly, very effectively. But yeah, like I said, didn't quite know what we were going to get for that opening drop and to have it match mapped out in that way, just keeping that feel, that aesthetic and uh, laying it out, spreading it out over a dubstep kind of beat, which has got a bit more of a traveling feel to it, as opposed to something a bit more stop start maybe, which you might associate with dubstep more, which was nice. The layout paced out a bit more, like I said, and just moving along, swimming along in that effective way. The drum and bass, I mean, at first I thought the drop was a fake out, given there wasn't much kind of rooting that scaled up approach that he was going for there. But then you get that quick fire, that tick, 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 and that's all managed very well. I mean, the percussion in that second drop is uh, pretty, pretty exceptional. Maybe again here without flair when it comes to the ideas themselves, the uh, within each drop we get, but the simple idea of that transition is just a great one and a really good, uh, really good little thing to frame the track around and to go with the introduction, which is good as well. Just makes for another solid cut, you know, probably won't be one of my favorites here on the LP, but it is solid. It is uh, nearing that top few. But next up, we have track number 13, which is Intermolecular Lullaby. Blimey, I mean, the, the titles here, uh, they're, uh, they're quite something. I'm waiting for the extraterrestrial Milky Way Dream World bicycle ride, if you will. Yeah, this one is, um, I think this was, again, like, needed at this point. I mean, this guy had to place all of these sounds in very particular places. And if any of them are kind of off kilter or off point and not in their exact spot, then it doesn't work. So, the detail, the attention to it, again. 
on the vocal is hitting some notes. I think it is Harvey on this one, on the vocal. And this has actually got a bit of memorability factor about it. Yeah, this kind of stuff slowly becoming, you know, some of my favourite chime material. Where there's less going on, you can hear each sound, like I said, really clearly. It's just a really good string to add to his, well, the bow of his aesthetic overall, you know? Yeah, I mean, not much more to add with that one. Appreciating the more delicate stuff, the more spacious stuff, the gaps being left there. Quite a vulnerable feel to it with the, uh, with the amount going on there in those more delicate, uh, fractious moments, uh, the, the progression of the drops there, just hanging on each little turn and each little note that's put in there to embellish the sound and the feeling overall. And the vocal got a couple of nice touches, you know, a, a little bit ordinary for the most part with the lyrics and just the tone of it overall, but a couple of notes reached that you're like, yeah, I'm going to remember that and that is going to lodge in my head and constitute as an important part of that track. So yeah, another decent one there. At track number 14, we have Mind Burn. Six minutes 15, you know. Quite a lot is going to happen here, I can, I can tell. Mind burn. I mean, I, I, I yeah, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say yes. Where next? Three minutes to go, bro. Where next? Where next? Just keeps on going, doesn't it? Just churning out, you know, one new step in the journey after another. Mum, take me home, I'm scared. <laughs> Mate, come on! Mate, as if, as if he just whipped out the hard style like it was nothing. Excuse me, I, 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 I'm I lost for words with that one. That was a journey. There is no other real way of describing it. I'm just going to check now to see if there is a track that is longer than that. Okay, Bittersweet Butterflies was longer. The, uh, the house, that was the housey cut, wasn't it? With the different kinds of house in there. But this one, yeah, a close second and um, unsurprising because it just kept on going and going and going, revealing one step after another of this incredible journey uh, that Chime goes on with this track, mapped out with this insane medley of different tempos and different percussive structures and patterns, different tones as well, like there were points where it was super dark and then other points where it was madly uplifting and everything in between. Uh, just uh, a classic case here of uh, having heard it once through, just struggling to kind of wrap my head around it. But of course there was that final drop and that was mad. I mean, we've had a lot of variety here so far from house to, you know, bits of trap and different kinds of dubstep, DMB as well, of course. And to just lob that in there, 
nearing the end here. You know, I was kind of wondering, are we going to get any more curveballs, any more anything else that's just going to, you know, throw us as the listener completely off guard and kind of take us off our seat kind of thing? Let me tell you, I was nearly up off my seat with that one. I mean, I could, I could kind of kind of hear something cheeky was coming with that build-up, but I didn't expect that. I didn't think he'd quite go fully fully in with the, what was it, hard-style kicks. I want to say that was involved there. I mean, I can't quite remember, but it was huge. It was monstrous. It was beastly, and Chime did it exactly in his way with a load of colour and a load of radiance, a load of vibrancy to it. And yeah, it was perfect, to be honest, as a way of rounding off that tune. The exact kind of energy that you needed, the hype of it, the intensity. Another one that I look forward to going back to again and going on that journey. 15. Track number 15 is the title tune. 4 minutes 42, let's go. Some very clever and aware Cossive touches here. Very, very on point. Okay, yeah, this has got big, 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 big bringing in the outro, the final couple tracks energy, for sure. Through this music in particular, I can see Chime on that little plinth there, that little platform of rock just looking out over this world. Oh, behave. Behave, behave, stop it, stop it. The management of that, the transition into that, that was bellissimo. Quickening up here. Oh, yeah. Into a, into a D&B beat. There we go. Keeps going. Finally. Peace. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, that moment. I didn't know what was going to happen again. He's so good at creating that. You know, he has said to me in the past that he has a little bit of, well, he has had a little bit of a, a problem or an issue with um, with builds. And I was, I was really surprised by that because I was like, really, do you find them difficult? He's like, yeah, I find that probably the hardest bit of the production process. But that is just not evident here on this album. And to be honest, in the last couple of years at all. Yeah, incredible build work across the whole album, but there in particular it became most evident, really ramping up with that final moment just to say peace. That was uh, really, really well managed before that exhilarating, just quite thrilling moment at the end there with the high pitch, just really seismic kind of glowing sounds that we got at the end there. Again, very colourful, carrying on the theme of the LP very well. In what is one of the final moments for the album at this point, we've got one more full track and an outro to go. On that note of building well, we got that in the first half as well. That patted percussion, bringing in the track, got a couple minutes of that. It's another that probably won't be Again, up there with my very, very top favourites from the LP, but super solid, really adding to the whole storytelling, story building, and just a prowess of the album overall. Penultimately, the final full cut here, we have Starstorm. Well, this is vintage chime. This is absolutely vintage right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nice to end, I think, for Chime's debut album with a, you know, classic vintage chimey kind of cut. This is, I think, the style that he's most renowned for. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Get a bit playful with that piano. My G. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Wow, this one's really coming into its own. Really blooming, really coming into its own in that second half. I think the first half was a little bit more uh, run-of-the-mill, the kind of stuff we've heard before from him. Uh, not really adding that much new to that style from him. But yeah, that the, some of the musicality in that second drop. Just going to keep running through here without adding anything more, just to have this final minute or so. Okay, now that track is titled with three question marks and is that saying that what we just got there was a bunch of futuristic creatures of some sort who were talking to each other and we have no idea what they're saying? Is it just trying to be like, huh? Like, what, what, what are you saying, huh? What, 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 is, what is the language that you speak in this world that I found myself in, huh? What is it? But it could also be, hmm, what's coming next? Because it kind of leads off into the distance there. And so you're just like, hmm, what's coming next? Where is this album leading? What is the thing that comes after this? Is it just gonna lead on from that outro, from that final minute directly into something else, transitioning perfectly and seamlessly into the next track that he is gonna drop? Is there more world building to come after this? Who knows? We are going to find out. Only he knows. But he is posing the question for sure. But yeah, this album, guys, I mean, there's a lot going on here. And there's absolutely no way that I've got a kind of rounded take on this LP as a start to finish listen. I mean, what I will say, I'm loving the variety style and genre wise. I think we've got a load of variety within this LP, which is fantastic. It's what you want. I think from most artists for a debut LP. We've got fantastic production across the whole thing. Maybe a couple of moments here and there that are a bit more rough around the edges, but they're very much uh, dwarfed and kind of swamped out by the good stuff. And trust me, there is a lot of good stuff, whether it is the percussion or transitionary moments, the mixing of it overall, pretty fantastic, I would say, given how much is going on. Yeah, production value very high with this LP, the world building that we get, the little vocal samples, the blending from one track into another pretty much across the board here. I mean, there are a couple tracks that cut off when the track ends, but for the most part, it just runs as like a continuous mix of some sort, which is incredible. It just amps up that whole feeling of it being a world, a general experience that we are having right here with this album, very much again reflected by this stunning artwork. Definitely tracks that are better than others here, ones that are a bit more maybe compact or the ones that are a bit longer, having better ideas. There are a couple of tracks here that are quite long and maybe a couple of sections within those that overstay their welcome a little bit and don't add that much to the tracks overall. I would add also maybe on the not so good side that there aren't that many memorable vocals here. I mean, a couple with the odd moment, but I wouldn't say there is a, a an outright great vocal across this LP in my opinion. I think that is where it maybe just dips a little bit in terms of like a, a singular factor that is uh, relatively consistent across the whole collection. The fact that I'm struggling here to give a really, you know, narrowed down and exact take is testament to the fact that it is ambitious, that there is so much uh, bound up within the LP and that Chime really did go out of his way here with his debut collection, with his debut full length to try things out to experiment you know there are tunes here where you're just like yeah I've kind of heard that from you before not adding that much not only to the LP but within your discography overall but in spite of that drawback you know a couple of tracks here that you know could fall by the wayside somewhat it is all done within that aesthetic within that style and that theme is consistent throughout the LP which isn't very easy to do and which he does masterfully I think you know really plunges you into that world from the very beginning and you don't feel like you've left it or been taken out of it really at any point and again that is just a sign of how much is going on here and how well for the most part it is pulled together if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if general bass music coverage is your thing if you enjoy it got loads more coming up soon as you will all know drop your thoughts as well in the comments down below on the LP what do you make of it overall which track is your favorite of the 15 main ones that we get here I mean the outro or intro might be a favorite just drop all your thoughts down below patreon link there in the middle bottom of the screen and yeah i shall see all of you legends in the next one whatever that might be peace